Have you ever tried to use a standard 3D printed part in a functional application? If so, you've likely found the limitations pretty quickly, as 3D printed materials traditionally come with a lot of drawbacks, namely with regard to material strength. They also really don't look that great without some major modification and frequently have dimensional accuracy issues. In this video series, we've been attempting to create a pair of fully functional, production ready, 3D printed snowboard bindings and just finished our design inside of SOLIDWORKS. If these bindings were to live up to their promise, we needed a material for the structural elements of our bindings, namely the base and the high back, that would be strong, stiff, and produce good looking, precise parts. We also needed a process capable of delivering on these fronts at a reasonable print speed that was able to overcome the limitations of traditional 3D printers. And that's where HP's Multi-Jet Fusion printers come into play. They offer an elegant and professional grade solution to the pitfalls of traditional 3D printing, and they are rapidly changing how we think of production. These printers can print a wide variety of end-use materials that help engineers and designers take their ideas from CAD to reality, including PA11, which is ductile and recyclable, TPU, which produces very flexible and compliant parts, TPA, which is similar to TPU, but offers better performance at lower temperatures, polypropylene, which is chemical resistant, weldable, and has a low moisture absorption rate, and finally, PA12, which produces extremely strong and low cost parts. Because HP has enabled both material manufacturers and their customers to develop materials they need to print, more materials are always being added to this list. For our application, the load-bearing parts of our bindings, we needed a material that is strong and capable of producing precise parts and yields a good surface finish. And it also has to be fast and economical to print. For these reasons, we chose PA12 as it meets all of these requirements well. Parts produced with PA12 are very strong, durable, have a great surface finish, and are dimensionally accurate and print quickly. After choosing our material, we had to choose a machine to produce our parts with. Because we were printing our parts with PA12, we had to choose between the 580 and the 5200, which each offer specific advantages. The 5200 series offers more production-oriented features, such as increased print speed, greater repeatability, a wider material portfolio, and higher throughput capabilities because of its larger build volume and removable build units. The 580, while geared towards prototype runs, does have a unique trick up its sleeve, the ability to print parts in full color. This feature allows users to print graphics, colors, or even images directly into their prints. It also fits in a much smaller space than the 5200, such as an office where a larger machine would not be able to be installed. This is why we ended up choosing the 580 to print the structural parts. Instead of painting, hydro dipping, or applying adhesives to apply graphics to the parts, we simply build them right into the part. However, there are multiple options available to finish multi-jet fusion parts of all kinds, including dyeing, vapor smoothing, and even more exotic processes like electroplating. With the PA12 parts printed and in hand, all that we needed to do now was produce the pads for each binding. Join us in the next video to see how we designed and printed the binding pads. Click on the link below to get signed up for the webinar and catch up on our progress so far. And follow us along on our journey to create a pair of 3D printed snowboard bindings.